Hello guys, today we're going to take another look at a little product here from IC Station. This time it is a little single cell LiPo battery charger. First thing is pretty obvious, we have a little USB connection there. So we can clearly hook this up to a USB charger, same as you usually get with your mobile phone now. So you could plug that in, actually that could be, yeah, it looks like actual mobile phone connection there. So or well a common mobile phone USB connection uh, if you have a Samsung phone anyway you probably have connection like that your charger probably comes like that so you could hook this up to your uh, mobile phone charger and that will give you the 5 volts that you need to power this little circuit which will charge the battery the circuit's fairly simple what it really is everything is done by this linear technologies chip here it's an LTC 4056 that's going to pretty much control the current that we feed our circuit with and the 5 volts that we're getting from the uh, USB is probably going to be all we really need so the circuit doesn't have a regulator the USB input is going directly to the in pins that you see here as well so there's no uh, separation between these pins and that means uh, without a regulator you're going to have to keep your voltage between I think it's 4.5 and 6.5 volts to suit our little uh, linear technologies chip here. So that's only that's the only real uh, limiting factor you have here. You can supply your 5 volts from anywhere because you have your two connections here. But it's probably easiest to do it from a mobile phone charger. That said, uh, this can drive up to 700 milliamps. I think it was. Your phone charger might not have the same. Uh, capability so your charger might limit it whereas a different power supply with a 5 volt output might not limit it you know you're, you could have a supply that can uh, drive or that can deliver an amp and this will just regulate that to the, whatever it's set to somewhere between 200 and 700 milliamps I think but we'll hook this up and we'll see what kind of current are we getting from uh, this little charger when we're charging a battery Okay, well the first thing we obviously need is a flat battery, so I have a LiPo here. And you can see at 3.7 volts that battery is pretty much flat. So what it should be is 4.2. We'll hook it up to our new battery charger here and measure the current while it charges and hopefully we'll get it back to 4.2. Although uh, realistically this battery has seen a lot of use so it could be damaged we might not get to 4.2 but we'll give it a go and see what happens okay so I have the uh, multimeter set to amps there um, the positive of the output is going through the multimeter to this this is the positive of the battery the ground of the battery is connected here to the negative of the output I have a one amp, uh, uh, well it's an Apple charger from a uh, an old um, MP3 player or something like that. So that's able to produce one amp. Uh, this is a fairly decent cable, I think, for the uh, delivering the power. It's probably the best that I have. I have other cables that I got on eBay, which I doubt are really any good at all. But uh, hopefully that cable will work fine. We have a little green LED down there. I think that's in as far as it goes. You can see a little green LED down there. Maybe you can see it on the camera as well. So we have power to the circuit. This other light doesn't appear to be on. So let's hook up the uh, the negative and see does that light come on then? Is that saying to the battery's flat? We'll see. Okay, so that light is on there. Ah, okay, so it looks like the green light is when it's charged, the red light is when it's not charged. You can see we're drawn in the region of 710 milliamps, 700 milliamps. What's going to happen there, I would assume, is as the battery charges, we're going to draw less and less current until, until the uh, battery's charged, basically. So I guess I can leave that there and um, 
we'll just see how long it takes. Okay, well the battery in the uh, camera died there, so I'm not quite sure if we actually caught the switch from the uh, red LED to the green there, so from uncharged to charged. But you can see that there's no longer any current flowing. The green light is on, so we can assume that our battery is charged. And if we check the voltage, we should be getting around about, uh, what would it be, would be probably... Uh, 4.1, 4.2 volts. Four point one volts. So that's basically that's it charged. This battery has been charged and discharged a lot. So probably if it was brand new battery, it'd get a, a little bit higher. But that's that seems to have worked fairly reasonably there. I suppose while we're here, we'll take a look at what voltage it actually charges at so I'll set it up for another uh, another battery and we'll we'll just measure the voltage actually no I can't do that because the battery would drop the voltage let me see is there any output if we just hook the charger up here probably not if it's switching off that LED it probably turns it off oh no looks like it's charging at around about 4 volts it's jumping so it could be a pulse width thing so it could be going to a higher voltage than 4 and then dropping down again but in the region of 4.1 volts which is probably what you would expect so that little battery charger circuit seems to work pretty perfectly um, I'm thinking of maybe getting a few of these and wiring them all together so that I can charge a bank of uh, these uh, single cell lipo batteries when I'm at a show or um, well, even just here at the, in the in my little office if I could just have a, a row of these set up I'd be able to charge a lot of batteries all at once be quite useful and with the little indicator LED there it uh, helps a lot because the ones that I have at the minute my other chargers they're all they all came with old we'll say um RC helicopters or infrared helicopters and while well, to do the job but they're real cheap and uh, the light kinda doesn't seem to mean anything there's they go on and they go off at random intervals. If I could get a bunch of these that I think from the testing that we've done now looks like they're gonna work pretty well. I had a bunch of those reliably set up on a little board so I could just plug in and plug out the batteries whatever way I wanted I could have them set up with just rows of header that I could plug this into or the uh, female version of the DuPont connector and just quickly get things working for me that would be pretty ideal so uh, I think that's a pretty good board if you want to get one yourself you head over to IC station the link should be in the description and uh, if you like the video make sure and hit the thumbs up button any comments or suggestions let me know below the video and that's all I have for this one so thanks very much for watching.